Jim Al-Khalili, welcome to the University of Huddersfield. Thank you. Just yesterday, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Arosh and Wineland for groundbreaking experimental methods that enable measuring and manipulation of individual quantum systems, uh, showing that although quantum physics has been around for 100 years, there are still new and exciting things to find. Today at TEDx Huddersfield, you'll be talking not about quantum physics, but about quantum biology. How new is this field and where is it likely to take us in the future? Well, it's actually not that new, although a lot of people won't have heard about it. So you think about quantum biology uh, in, in the name. Biologists don't like quantum physics. They find it very, well, they just don't believe it, I suspect. And quantum physicists don't like biology because it's messy and complicated. Quantum biology has been around probably for half a century. After all, physicists and biologists have worked together in the past. I mean, Crick and Watson and their discovery of DNA is a wonderful example of that. Quantum biology is a new field in terms of being taken seriously. And as the Nobel Prize in Physics yesterday showed, quantum weirdness is still producing surprises. So this is work carried out in the last decade or two showing that things like atoms being in two places at once, things being able to communicate across vast distances spontaneously, this is the realm of the quantum world. Physicists are used to it, it's been around for a century, still throwing up surprises, and one of the biggest surprises is that it may well play a role in life, in biology. And so what I'm going to be talking about at TEDx Huddersfield is this new emerging field where it may well be that things like how we smell, or how plants carry out photosynthesis, or even how genetic mutations might take place, might have its answer in quantum physics. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.